Hey everyone, it's Christopher Swan, and welcome to this week's episode of Living Your Journey. Each week, I have this amazing opportunity to chat with people that love what they do in life. They understand their passions and their direction. Maybe it's a career path or the social impact that they're making. It's kind of like they're following their North Star, but they know their story may change and they understand that they're on a journey every day. Today, I have a great chat with artist Victor Herrera. Victor, also known as Victor H, paints street-styled art pieces on various mediums, like canvas, wood, and clothing. He describes his work as whimsical and slightly unnerving. Think illustrated characters with a spin. It's also clear that his days painting graffiti on the streets as a kid carried over to his work today. His work can be found in homes with collectors, on limited edition runs of apparel, and even making appearances at celebrity events. Victor doesn't have a formal education in art. In fact, he was working in a technical job prior to going full-time as an artist. He's also colorblind. All of this is part of Victor's story, of how he came into his own, becoming an artist, and how he continues to grow. This conversation is all about discovering what you love, testing the waters, and pursuing a new career. Victor is humble and real, and that makes our conversation even better. Everyone, meet Victor. Victor, it is great to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm excited. Good. I'm glad. So, okay, here's where I'm going to jump in at. I... I, I've been thinking about this for a while because I've known you for a long time, but <laughs> what's interesting because I think our conversation is in a really different space because I knew you before art was this main focus in your life and Absolutely. right. And you were kind of still figuring out your story, like not just professionally, but even just like, yeah, well, you know, like, like maybe who you were and what you wanted to focus on. So I'm excited to talk about like, like how you start in the art world like and, and how you're doing it full time. Because I think, from where I knew you to where you are today, that's like, I mean, it's a long time, but it's also a big jump. So I think that's a really interesting thing. So let me ask with the first question is, um, so you, obviously you're an artist. So why do you create art? Like, like, why does it matter to you? Why that? Um, You know, it's so funny. Uh, I would say just, it just happened to be a, another out for me. And it just motivated me to see all this cool animation that I like uh, back then. So I enjoyed all the cartoons and it really just makes me happy. And I just picked up a pencil and markers and I started to do stuff and doodle as a kid. And it just became this thing. And I just liked it. And, 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 and now it is, it's, it's bigger than what I expected. I, I can't even imagine what it is now from where I, I started. And it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. It's a big journey and it's a big path that I don't even know where, it, I don't think it ever would ever end because I can't even sit down. Even before this conversation, when you were explaining everything to me, I already had a pencil and paper and I was like, oh, I'm going to sketch because I'm really, it's, it's, uh, it's like crazy. I have to sketch all the time. Well, it's interesting that you said it was like, you know, it, it's bigger than than it, when you started. So when you when you think about that in that bigger part, it, is that like I ask you about the like why you do it? Like is that do you feel like it's part of like maybe even this like bigger purpose for you? Like you just you need to do it this way. It's like a it's the outlet you need to be creative in. I think so. And you know, there's a lot of artists that I that I admire and I look up to and I think they're awesome, but I always feel like you know, I could be that that little niche that they're not representing. And I'm very dark and whimsical. And I always like to make people um, be, be a little bit scared and terrified of like, oh, my God, that looks a little creepy. But it's but it's but it's so cool. And like, for, for instance, my logo is I don't even know if it's a cat, a fox. I don't even know what it is myself, because there's different people that are like, oh, that's a cool cat. I'm like, yeah, it looks like a fox now, but I don't know. So I'm like, whatever. But even the name of it, I was like, his name's going to be Lucifer because I thought it was always so cool. I was like, it's a, it's something that was placed in Disney 
if you remember in um, Cinderella, I believe it was Lucifer or Lucifer was a cat. I, I can't even remember. Cat. That's right. Yeah. Right. So I thought it was so cool that here's this amazing fairy tale Disney animation. It's all awesome. And then there's this one cat and his name is Lucifer and it's titled this crazy name. And I thought it was so cool. And then I was like, I'm going to use that one day on one of my characters. And when I created this Lucifer character of mine, it's, it became so cool. It became so bigger than me that everybody likes it and everybody knows it's mine because it's just, you look at it and you're like, that is so rad and different. But at the same time, like his name is there and they're, then they're the, they take a little step back. Like that is so dark, but it's so cute at the same time. You're right. I'm so, it's so funny you said that. I'm actually staring at it right now. And, <laughs> <laughs> and because of that, you're right, because it's, it is a little like it's whimsical, but it's dark, especially because he has no eyes and it's just these black <laughs> pits in there. But it's actually because he has this goofy grin. So it does look kind of like fun and, and cool. So you are really right about that. Yeah. And it started from like, you know, him having like a shocked mouth. And then now it has it has evolved to like a cool little grin where he has a smile on um, on the Instagram. Um, I still need to update the website, but so far... Um, the new version is, is a, it's a better, um, thing cause it's just, it's a smile and you get to see the sharp teeth and you're like, Whoa, that's kind of creepy. But at the same time, the colors, it all brings it back. And I've always made sure that, um, my favorite color is salmon. So I made sure that that was placed in there cause your favorite, that's a very full, <laughs> your favorite color it? is salmon. I it's don't, salmon. I don't think I've ever heard it say like salmon. It's like, it's like neon beige or something like really. Yeah. It's like, I mean, that's it's awesome. Like a, I don't mean to make fun of you, but I've never heard that before. <laughs> no, no, it's totally cool. And, um, I've always thought it was so cool cause it's very, um, you know, Oh, it's a, it's a girly color or like, you know, it's a pink. It's like, no, it's not pink. It's, it's like a red, orange and white mix in there. I can see that. And, it mixes uh, with your art. Yeah. 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 For sure. It took me a while though, because I'm colorblind. So t- sometimes I thought I made salmon and it's like, no, that looks like peach. All right. So you just said that, um, you're colorblind. And I was going to bring this up a little bit later too, because I thought you mentioned this to me a while ago and I had no clue you were colorblind. So, okay, I'm going to jump forward a little bit, and I want to talk a little bit about that, too. So does that, like, impact your work at all? I mean, how do you... A lot. Is, so how do you how do you work? Because, I mean, okay, well, maybe before I even ask that question, maybe we should just describe for the folks that are, are listening, too. Would you describe the style of your art? And then we'll so, talk about colorblind. Right. I'm sorry, cut you off. Uh, so from what I know in a professional art world, is called outsider art but from what i was always told it was just street art um so i've never been i've never been in an art class and i found out i was colorblind when i was in college i was taking a test and it was uh electronic space so the resistors had different codes and i didn't i couldn't tell the difference in certain codes because there's different colors and then i noticed i was colorblind and then once I started picking up paint and coloring things, I started to do the same thing. I started to mix green with browns. And if it was blues, I would mix it with purples. And my palette was everywhere. So most of my characters have these crazy colors and people wouldn't even dare to touch those colors or even think those colors would work. But because I'm colorblind in my eyes, I think they work. And when people see it, it just pops up. Do you do anything now to try to mix what somebody who's not colorblind would see to create something that's a yes. little bit different? Yes, absolutely. So I, what I do most of the time is now is I label everything like perfectly fine. And then also my manager would come in and I'm like, hey, you know, can you be another set of eyes that are actually perfect in mine? And we'll sit down and we'll pick out the colors and I'll start mixing and then he would see him and then he would be like, yeah, yeah, you definitely got it. And I'm like, cool. And then we move forward. But I don't, um, there's been a lot of moments where I do a lot of commissions and paintings and, um, I, the characters will be a little darker than they should be because, um, because of lighting and also, you know, the certain colors I don't see. Right. So yeah, I do mix them up a lot, but um, I do label a lot now. I label everything right, so then when I pick it up, 
I'm like, oh, this looks like a blue. And it's like, no, that's definitely a black. Like, <laughs> don't, don't, don't mix that. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of labeling. I mix colors and I label a lot just, just for my own safe, like for sure. I think that's so, that's so smart that we brought that up too, because I would never have guessed like somebody who does art full time is colorblind. Like I, I, I just don't think of that. I would just think yeah. like, oh, there's this, you know, person who really understands it, gets it, uh, understands the depths of all these things. But it, it also even speaks to like, it doesn't matter if you're colorblind or not. Like there's still ways around if you want to create something there, you could still do it. Right, exactly. It's just like if, uh, just for instance, I've never gone to art school. So I, there's been moments where I'm like, there's no way I could pull that off. Like I don't, sometimes I'm like, I'm probably like one of those fraud artists that I, I don't know anything because I've never been to a class. So I don't know what's the right brush. I don't know what's the right technique. And I'm just like, you know, I'll just give it a shot. And I just tell everyone like, you know, definitely just do it. Just, you have nothing to lose by the end of the day. You, it's either going to, it's art, it's subjected to everyone. So people, someone is going to hate it and someone's definitely going to love it. So just go for it. So how did you know that? Did you, did that come naturally to you to like, just to believe in yourself or did somebody like help you with that, you know, to get past that, that f fraudulent artist? Um, uh, yeah, you know, um, I met a bunch of artists and I had a lot of great mentors that I've saw and witnessed and, you know, it's definitely true. A lot of artists, uh, do get caught in, 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 you know, we're our worst critiques. So, um, I just, I just, you know, decided to say one day, you know what, I really have nothing to lose. And let's just do it. Let's, I'm just going to go with this and do it and do this project. And if it comes out awesome, then cool. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, nobody's perfect. Yeah, there's moments where I'm like, yeah, that I, I'll get sad. And I'm like, damn, this was not what I expected. Like, I, I wanted it to be a lot better and it didn't. And then there's moments where I'm like, this was, and then there's moments where I say that. And then people that come and see it are like, oh my God, this is your best work. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? This is like horrible. And they're like, no, 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 no. Like, this is awesome. Like, we have to. I'm like, uh, yeah, okay, whatever. So it's crazy. It's definitely. I, I, that's why I think um, we are worst. We are our worst critiques for everything. Yeah, as an artist, I, I I even think that for anybody who's creative, right? We we're probably extra critical about our own stuff, and we we kind of get in our own way versus just being in the moment and actually expressing ourselves and doing what we need. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Absolutely. Did, did those people that actually did say, Hey, like this is great work and whatever. And especially when you were like, what well, did that kind of stuff? Uh, or did those, those folks help you kind of, did that start to help you believe in yourself even further? Like, is that part of that support? Not only that you just like flipped the switch and it was like, Hey, I'm just going to do it. What do I got to lose? But did this, it, did those kind of, um, I guess, acknowledgments help? Uh, yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, it, it, it makes me feel good that, you know, uh, joy that people like it and appreciate it. And um, if I felt like it was bad, it turns it around real quick for me. But um, I still question it like, oh, I don't know, man. This is not that great. But apparently, you know. <laughs> apparently people like apparently, it. apparently <laughs> yeah you know it's weird it's it's so weird i can't even it's so hard to to say but it's so true like there's so many amazing pieces that um people took from my house and and they love and then i'm over here in the other end like yeah that's probably never gonna sell or that's i gotta start all over mm. or uh, you know this this color wasn't right and it's it's totally the opposite you just never know it's very unexpected well, let's take a, a step back. And, you know, you talked about you, you, you know, haven't had a formal education in art. And so I knew this, your background, you were, you were pursuing a more of a technical, you know, field in industry. And you went from there. And I know that we've talked to this story about kind of how you jumped over into art. But like, so maybe give us like a brief description, like what even, you know, turned you into leaving this kind of technical job into hey i'm going to start doing some art and then start believing in yourself what was that how did that happen um so i started uh to i was really into streetwear and 
I liked a lot of graphic designers that were doing really cool graphics on shirts. And at the time, I wasn't really um, taking art serious. And I had a friend named Jason, and Jason actually told me, like, you should definitely uh, sketch and, you know, put put a shirt out with your art. And I was like, you know what? I have nothing to lose. Let's do it. So I just did it. He helped me. Um, put it out it sold it did great and then I was like oh maybe I should get back into sketching started to sketch a little more and then I don't I don't even know what sparked it but I was like I should paint like I should definitely pay, buy some cheap paint and just doodle like you know do something so I took that and then I went to a uh, a party and I met um, Margaret and she was basically the founder of me and she basically um was you know flipping out and she was like oh your art is amazing you have to then she knew the whole story i'd never been to art school and uh i was colorblind and you know i had a little bit of a graffiti background as a child but it stopped because of my mother and um it was so crazy so because of her she's the one that gave me the spark to she was the person that believed in me and told and told me like you should definitely stop your nine to five as a computer electronic engineer and you know try this out like definitely try it out and i was so scared i was so scared because that's something that a lot of people are afraid to do like you know leave your leave your yeah exactly and it's 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 crazy and i was so terrified and i was like i don't know i was like that's a big jump like i really don't know and um you know, I sat down with my peers and they were like, you know, just try it. So I did. And um, here I am now. It's it's five, it's five, six years. And because of me doing a little sketch on a t-shirt, I evolved to doing a different medium, which was painting. And now I'm just painting full time. Wow. Well, that's, I mean, it's kind of amazing that somebody, you know, had such faith in you and and I also know that it sounded like not only did she have faith in you, she also kind of maybe helped you along the way, kind of learn some of the ropes of like how to show your work or, or what to do. Is that true? Yeah, that is true. Uh, so Margaret was um, an art collector, which I did not know. <laughs> and uh, when I showed her my artwork, she was like, OK, I'm going to guide you, take you with a few people that I know in um in Hollywood and expose you and try to teach you the ropes, teach you the politics mm. and all that about it. And, um, we'll see how it goes. So, you know, I had to go to a few galleries and get critique and, um, everybody said, you know, I had to refine my hand and, uh, I just decided to do, I figured out how to get through that. And, um, you know, it worked out, it worked out and Margaret definitely put me, in a nice path and helped me out, um, kind of guided me yeah. on, on like, you know, um, uh, like who to see, who to, how do they do that? How, how is this person, you know, um, an entrepreneur now, because an artist now you could basically, you could paint anything and sell it. You could paint on wood, you could paint in a chair, you could paint anything and, and people will buy it if it's your art, as long as it's good, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so then once I got that, I started doing the whole social media and and you know starting all that and and the website and taking it really serious. And Margaret was like, Margaret was very like business oriented, so mm. she was like, if you want to be um, this person, you have to you know look the part. So you have to be ready. Let's say I'm out with you and we're having out like lunch or something and. Someone likes my shirt. I have to be ready to be like, oh, thank you so much. You know, I appreciate it. Um, here's a business card. Check it out. And that was just something she was like, you have to do stuff like that because people always want to know the artist and people always want to feel special. And I said, awesome. So once I did all that, you know, people started really seeing like the movement of it. And it's here now. Do you, that uh, that I love everything you just said there, especially about that that even that business element. Like you have to look the part, right? It's not just hey, you can design great art because anybody could tell you that. But it's, right, right. It's those words that she told you too about like oh, you have to do this and then make sure you have a business card and, and these sorts of things. 
uh, were those even things that you even thought about before she shared that or kind of guided you? I mean, I knew some of it, but I didn't know, like, I didn't know I had to, like, have a website. I didn't know I had to, you know, register copyright. I didn't know any of that. So mm-hmm. she was like, no, you have to do this stuff because you never know in business, like, who's going to, like, you know, try to steal your character or use it in some type of form or you know uh let's say i again i'm out in the street and i run into a celebrity and they love my my work i have to be prepared to deliver so if i have nothing to show it's it's i'm just practically nothing right you know you're missing opportunity so smart absolutely exactly so i rather just be ready at all time so whoever it is i always you know, give it 110. And because you never know who that person is and who that person is going to be. So I always, I'm always genuine with everyone and I stay humble and I just, I'm always just very approachable and I'm just like, yeah, yeah, sure. Whatever you want, let's do it. So, you know, here's my website, check it out, call me or text me, whatever, whatever's easier for you, call, text, email. So, um, those are definitely big keys that Margaret helped me out in. And I'm very great, grateful for her like to be in my life still because yeah. she's she's someone that I still call and contact whenever I'm lost and I'm like, hey, Margaret, you know, I'm in this situation. She's there. Oh, so, gosh, that's amazing. That's even like even that we didn't say it as advice, but it's almost like perfect advice for anybody who's doing it. Like, you know, you, yeah. need, you need to think about all those angles or even have somebody that mentors you that, you know, that can help you think through some of it. Hey, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about um back to kind of your style of art um we talk about the medium it's obviously i know you that's you're, you're all about pain so your end results it appears are mostly you know the original work that you've done which is in some sort of print and you also do it um you also have clothing that you have a lot of your designs on as well which is under the brand level 52 so right. could you tell us a little bit about so like where do you like where do you focus on a lot is it about the original art or is it about this the streetwear clothes because when i see your stuff and this is part of why i ask because i your your art is very like street art outside art and it seems like it fits perfectly on clothing like <laughs> like like when we talk about it when you're like oh if celebrity sees me of course because it's like somebody who's a little bit more urban or young or hip or something kind of like that. I could see them wearing your stuff. Right. So what's your focus? Like, where's your space? Is it just the original creation or is it about clothing? Where do you go? So a little bit before that, before I answer that quick question, sure. uh, um, my goal when I started this was that I wanted to make sure that everyone could wear my art or have my art in the house. So it didn't matter if it was going to be a five-year-old to a 70 year old or above i wanted that was my main my main key i was like i gotta make sure that everybody's gonna be okay with this and that's why the, the style was whimsical and dark because it's so lovable from you know from five to 70 like people could love it regardless and as now as going as uh, choosing art pieces and how it fits it was that is still kind of something i still dab with because i'm not you know i'm not uh i'm not perfect so like certain stuff i'm like uh like the stormtrooper t-shirt uh that i did a painting i did first it was a painting the stormtrooper painting with the geometric tessellations like i was like this is cool painting and then somehow i missed the chance to put it on the shirt this was like four years ago and i just did the t-shirt like this year so it was so weird Uh, there's stuff that i do where i'm like i should have just done the t-shirt or i should have just painted it so i don't really know how to how to choose um i just tend to do and create different stuff every day and then lay it out in a month and then i'm like okay this is awesome this is not this is good and then i start keeping the good ones and stashing all the bad ones and then i come back and then i revamp all the bad ones if i can and then just try to make something out of them and see if they even make a painting or make a t-shirt yeah, that makes sense. You just go with what feels right. Right. And then sometimes people, you know, I have friends over or I have good friends that I know that would spend money on a, like, you know, on t-shirts or 
or on paintings and I'm like, what do you think of this? I'm like, don't share it or leak it, but just tell me genuinely how do you feel about this? And then I get good feedback. Sometimes I get bad and then I just take it as is and I'm like, okay, um, awesome. And that's it. So I just figure it out. Okay. So you also mentioned, um, you just kind of ran past this, but I wanted to bring it up uh, because the graffiti art. (laughs) I could tell you almost chuckled when he said it because when I remember the story too, like you were like 13 or 14 and your mom like caught you and turned you over to the cops because you were doing graffiti. Yeah. Which is super awesome. I mean, clearly not awesome, but it's kind of awesome. (laughs) No, it wasn't awesome. (laughs) It's awesome for art. How about that part? It's awesome awesome for that. Yeah, it was. So, yeah, and also your background. So we talked about this thing about, you know, obviously this, this, technical roles that you were in but you know you were also a a big dancer back in the day as well and you were doing this graffiti art so here's what i'm curious about you always had this kind of artistic side obviously you used a sketch does any of that influence those kind of activities you know graffiti and the dance does any of that influence on what you're doing today like i would assume it does because you're kind of you're focused on like streetwear streetwise that kind of stuff but i'm curious how right. to, how do you take the past and does it influence anything you're doing today the music uh that i used to listen to you know back then um towards dancing definitely now it motivates me just how i, I used to dance to pick up a pencil and, and sketch or a paintbrush and create um in that regard, so I would say dance does that. I just switched it into instead of dancing, I'm like, pick up a pencil. But the music that I was dancing to and I love, I just now incorporated to that. As far as graffiti, uh, that helped me out a lot. I think that was something that I didn't, as a child, didn't know. But, um, you know, dabbing into how to be an, like an illustrator, because most of the graffiti world is illustration. Like you have to be able to make fonts with a pencil or uh you know in paper there's no illustrator where you tap here and tap there it's none of that it's definitely a pencil and paper or a pen and paper and you have to create the font and then you ask you have to make it all perfect lined up so if it's an inch all the letters have to be exactly an inch right across so i didn't know any of that till now and 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 i look back and i'm like wow like i was i was really training myself to do this stuff and i wasn't even aware of it or you know dabbing into colors and and playing with this and doing that and understanding that this color goes with that more and you know just i that was that blows my mind still to this day when i look back i'm like i didn't even know none of that and um it definitely definitely helps me now and even my signature is very uh, graffiti-ish. Yeah, it is. Um, and um, everybody likes it. So I'm just like, okay. I wasn't even going to keep that. I was going to do something very modern and nice. Everybody was like, no, that's it. Like, that's it. You have to st- – <laughs> You yeah, lo- they were like, we love it. You have to st- – I was like, really? I'm like, I don't uh, – I guess. I'm like, all right. And now people re- – like, if I – let's say I, I do something and I forget. I, I like for some reason I forgot to sign the the painting or I forgot something like that. They're like, no, 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 no. We want we want your signature right here. Like, can you do it? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. And then I forget, and it's it's, it's crazy because people want the signature and uh, just to make it valid and know it's mine, which is crazy. But that is it. Probably must feel crazy. Also, with the the style of signature, it almost it brings in your past into your current. So it kind of holds on a little bit to kind of where you started. Right. Uh, yeah, I agree. So, you know, this has been about six years, you said, and you've had, a, obviously this, you know, Margaret's been this mentor and it's kind of helped you along the way. And you're obviously doing a lot of great stuff and you're trying new things. But even during that time of like over the last few years, has there been times of struggle at all where, you know, most people that are in creative you know, jobs or, or something like that don't usually start to paint, let's say, and then a month later are amazing and selling everything and have a website and they're, it's not overnight success. Did, did you find that there's been a little bit of like a, maybe a struggle or a learning curve or something that was a little tough? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, n- nothing's very, um, there's no guarantee. Like even if I put my 10 hours plus and, and passion and 
it's probably not going to sell. Um, and you have to be okay with that. And yeah, there is times where it's financially in the beginning. It was definitely moments where I was like, wow, I haven't sold anything, like nothing. And I just started to, you know, um, use social media. And then I was like, I'm going to give Instagram, I'm going to give Facebook and Twitter a shot and, you know, see what happens. And I started postings and I started to get people more interested and it, it just, it picked up really fast. And there's moments where I'm like, I'm too backed up. I have to tell people like, give me a month and then I'll get back to you and, and we'll work something out. What a so, great problem to have. <laughs> right. It is. It's crazy, but it's so, I'm so uh, thankful and grateful. And, and, and at the same time, I'm shocked. Cause I'm like, you know, it's crazy. Cause it's, it's over the top. Like right now I'm working on a commission and then I'm getting like two other, other people that want one. I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm really tied up. Like I need to finish this. And, uh, there's no deadline because art, there shouldn't be any time for art. So as long, as much as it takes, that's, you know, that should be the key. You shouldn't rush it. Um, just because the client says, you know, I need it by Tuesday. If that's the case, then he should find a computer because, Art should be, you know, it should be what the artist is. Like, it should take its time, and whenever it's done and it's, it's ready, it's done. It I can't love, be rushed. I love that you said that. That um, How do you work that out with reality for people that do need some times? Even if it's not really rushed. But let's say they give you, like, oh, hey, a month or so. Here's the thing I, I'm really wondering. Yeah. yeah, no, if it's, like, a month, I, I mean, yeah, I'm... It's so crazy because people are um, blow. I blow their minds on how fast the turnaround I could do stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's usually because I'm very into it, and once the music's playing and once I'm into it, then it's over. Like it has to be done within like a week. But uh, there's been moments where I've taken three weeks max, and but the the canvas has to be huge. Like it has to be something like a 48 by 72. Then I'm like, okay, that's gonna take me three weeks for mm-hmm. sure. So you, um, you have a little bit of estimate to it. So it you may say you yeah like art you got to take your time, but it's it's not what you're saying. It's like it's not it's not the um, uh, order on demand sort of like you're going to have it overnight. It's not that sort of thing because you're actually creating real art. But you also I would right. imagine you you have some timetables in your head too because obviously if you don't do it you you can't produce more and you don't get financially compensated. Blah 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 all that stuff. Right. Absolutely. So. You know, it just uh, as you as as an artist, you just know your speed. Sure. You know, you know what you could do, and you know if you push yourself. You know, it's just you just have to know yourself. <laughs> and once you do know that, I think you 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 know your timing, and 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 you could you could move on perfectly fine. As you keep creating more art, and you've been doing it for a while, and like you've talked about not having this formal education, but you know you learn along the way when you talk to people and you try new things. Who do you admire? Like whose work do you admire, or who inspires you? Maybe it's art, maybe it's film, maybe it's somebody else. But where do you look to to keep learning and to be inspired? Um, so there. All right. So we'll start with the 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 main thing, which would be. Uh, music so everything from like 50s to 80s i love um a lot so it could be from like disco to rock to alternative like i love all that stuff so that is that really inspires me to 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 sketch or paint sometimes like if i listen to sometimes i'll just walk around the block and i'm just listening to like the eagles or the zombies and then out of nowhere it's just like i'm like oh there's a cool idea like you know and i just Mm -hmm. go with that um, and sometimes it's definitely uh, animation, like classic stuff from like, you know, uh, Woody Woodpecker to Felix the Cat to, um, you know, the classic Disney stuff. Because back then you could see a little bit of violence. Uh, again, going back to the whimsical, it was definitely there. Uh, people just did, don't really realize it. But a lot of the old, old animation, there would be a gun involved. There would be a, you sure. know, like a knife and and. and it was pretty crazy and and then now you don't see any of that so i don't really watch a lot of the new stuff but all the old stuff i definitely love so i would say cartoons that were back before me and uh, i would say music that was before me and then there's this one artist that 
I do love and I do, you know, um, I, 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 it's crazy because I just found this out um, probably three months ago. And ever since then, I've been really studying him and reading about him and everything. And his name is Victor Vassarelli. And he's a godfather of geometrics. Mm. But in the, in the real art world, it's, it's called tessellations, a continuous pattern um, in the same size and shape. Um, so Victor Vassarelli is the godfather of uh, uh, geometrics tessellations. And I didn't know that. And I went to an auction with a friend of mine, and it turns out that there was a piece of his, and it blew my mind. All the cool geometrics and everything. I was like, "Whoa, this is crazy!" And and I just I just fell in love with it. And before that, before even knowing who he was, um, I was into geometrics. Patterns to me are awesome. And yeah. as an artist, and as an artist, I always tell a lot of artists, I'm like. Try to do patterns because it not only refines your hand, but it also like, you know, it, it teaches you to have patience and it teaches you to take your time and it also teaches you to catch speed. And once you refine your hand with patterns, I think an artist could do a lot because to make a straight line very perfect, it's crazy. It's definitely crazy. It's over the top when you do tessellations by hand. And I can you know. see how some of that's influenced some of your more recent work. I've, you know, I've seen some of the, the geometric stuff that you've done or the patterns. Yeah. And like I said, I, I've always done them, but I didn't know who Victor Vassarelli was mm-hmm. until not too long ago. And then I was like, oh my God, that's it. Like, that's the artist I look up to. But there's a bunch of other street artists that I like, you know, like Krola, um, Woes and you know, there's, uh, oh my God. Oh, Victor Castillo is awesome. He's from Peru. He's an awesome guy. Um, so there's a bunch of, um, street artists that are awesome and they have so many crazy techniques and different way their, you know, their palette works. And, um, I look up to a lot, everyone, I look up to everyone just because I could learn something new from anyone. It could be a little five-year-old to, to even you, I could hang out with you. And then the way you, you know, when I, the way you use your colors or whatever it mm-hmm. is that you use, like a pen, and I see you using your pen or the way you write your name or your signature, I would, I would use that. And I would be like, oh, that's so cool the way you did that. And then I'll just, I'll just work on it and then make it a Victor H and, and then that's it. <laughs> you just came up with a thing that I think all the time, and this sounds super cheesy, Victor, but I really believe it's true. I think inspiration is everywhere. You just have to look. You just, it's true. You just got to look for it. I love that you talked about music was – because that was surprising to me. Now, I know you you dig music and you're, you know, obviously it's an influence. I just didn't think of it as an influence to art. And I'm also surprised that you only went up to the 80s when you said it, like 50s to 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you said the Eagles, I was like, wait, what? Um, yeah, yeah, no. Because I do not bad. see the Eagles in your work at all. And so, I, first of all, I love how you can combine those things. And it's it's surprising and interesting when you talked about like Felix the cat and those kind of um, different kind of animation, I can absolutely see how that has come through to your work. So really interesting to see that. Yeah. And I, I remember watching that kind of stuff too. And and kind of like the, it's, it's interesting because you talk about the violence that maybe inspires you, like just that connection to it, even though it's, you're pulling in the darker whimsical piece of it, but there is no violence in yours. It's, it's just pulling out this kind of, questionable um character that you play with so really interesting yeah absolutely no i I think so too and the other like films disney films are awesome i think they're great like the classic stuff are amazing uh i look a lot i i go whenever i feel lost i do tend to go back and watch all that like you know pinocchio alice in wonderland uh clockwork orange is a big huge thing that i i i love the music in it and it's a very twisted film, so like I do, very. <laughs> I do enjoy watching it. And then after I watch it, I will sketch, and I would see like, oh, that was so cool. Or I've had a few friends where we watch it, and they're like, "Why are we watching this?" Like, I'm like, "Shh, this is gonna be awesome in the end for me. In the end, I'm gonna come up with something. So let me just watch this and, and get get it through." So That's there's so a lot funny. of stuff like that that I, that I like. Like Cool World is another movie. Oh yeah. Uh, that I love is awesome. It's very crazy. Uh, Roger Rabbit. It's awesome too. Cause so many vibrant colors and you know, a lot of, a lot of amazing stuff. And I just enjoy it. I think it's great. 
to look back at all the other stuff that oh. was made. Because nowadays, it's all like really animation, and, and it's awesome. I love it because now you can actually see fur from like mm. Monsters Inc. Sure. And and it's awesome. It's great. I always I, I love the evolution, but I would always go back to the foundation and and try to see what I missed. Like I'm like, oh, did I miss something? Or can this motivate me? Can I, mm. you know? And it's always stuff like that that I go back to. That's really great. Is there any memorable moments over the last few years that stand out to you that kind of mark at like maybe mm, I say success, kind of like milestones of like yeah, like or maybe kind of a moment of like holy crow, like look look, I I am actually doing something like this. You talked about maybe selling some art that didn't work, or I think there was even something you did for. Um, makes me think i don't know who they were but you painted some suits um for oh, a show yeah, yeah. so is there is absolutely. there a couple of things like that that maybe kind of stood out for you in your career so far absolutely i mean you know uh getting asked to do uh i was the first artist to paint at the line hotel on wilshire mm-hmm. um in downtown la uh when it opened they wanted me to be the l- first live artist um at their pool party that was amazing because I've never seen, I've never painted in front of a big crowd live. That was the first time. What was that and, like? Did oh that, my God. It was, were it you was nervous crazy. or was that actually exhilarating? It was, it was a lot of, I was nervous, but at the same time I was like, uh, you know, it's, it, this is going to be a great experience because if it's bad, I'm going to learn from all the bad mistakes I did. And if it's good, I'm going to learn I'm, regardless of the, situ- the outcome. I was going to learn. I, so I said, I love how I said, wise yes. you're being with that. Like I would have been like, so, Oh my gosh, this cannot be bad. <laughs> yeah, no. And I, and then, I mean, you know, there was moments cause they wanted me to do it. They wanted an answer. And I was like contacting my manager and I was like, I don't know if I should do this. I'm so scared. Mm-hmm. And he was just like, you know, just do it. And I was like, all right, you know, you're right. I should just do it. And I just did it. And it was amazing. That was the first one. The second one was basically when I did a, uh, I believe it was a, a charity event for pets, but Mel Gibson was having it. Mm. And they found me somehow through social media. And they basically wanted me to paint a live painting and a big painting, not a small painting. It was huge. And uh, that was mind blowing to be around all these, you know, celebrities that people look up to in TV. And I'm here painting a live painting for them and in their party and, and this whole thing. And I think the last one was probably the recent one, which was uh, Walk the Moon from MTV, uh, the VMAs Awards. Um, uh, that was that was amazing, too. That was through a friend of mine that is a – she's more than a friend. She's a family member, if anything. Uh, her name is Dee Anderson, and she uh, was – she's a stylist, and she was styled big celebrities in the in the music industry. And she was like, I really want to paint these suits for Walk the Moon. And then I was like, yeah, you know, totally. I'll help you out and we'll do them. And it was, that was a little bit frightening, I got to say, because I was, I was given a chance to paint over $3,000 jackets and then, wow. you know, and like $800 like pans. And then, and I'm like, before, before I even threw the first splash of paint, I was like, are you guys sure? Because there's no coming back from this. Like, <laughs> and who, this is the. And who are you talking to specifically? Was it like their management or? Because Walk the Moon oh, for the people that don't know is a band. And yeah, oh yeah, it's a rock band. And uh, so I was I was saying this to uh, uh, to D Anderson, and I was also saying it to the lead singer. Um, oh my god, what can I think his name? I think his name was. Uh, I feel bad. I feel bad. Uh, we will, I cannot we will not send this to him then. <laughs> Correct. Absolutely. I feel bad. Um, no. So anyways, you were yeah, talking to both of them? I was talking to main, mainly the lead singer. And I was like, look, there's no coming back from this. Are you sure? He said, yeah, let's do it. So he wanted like really vibrant red, like kind of like flames, but in a very abstract way. And I said, cool. I got it. And I started doing it. The first splash was very, very scary because I was like, if he hates it, there's no going back. <laughs> and this was for an award show? And this was for the MTV VMA Awards show. Yeah. And they were going to perform live. And then I was just like, oh, my God. I don't know if I can do this. 
and that was just very i was very nervous for that because i mean there's no coming back sure from that that's like you know let me spray paint your car like how do you come <laughs> back from that you can't you can't just erase it and be like oh i'll just erase or i'll just like paint over it and you know sand it down like no you can't do that so it was the same way with with clothing i was just like you know what let's do it so once you know, we did that. They all loved it. I have to do. I had to do all the the whole group. Um, you know, the drummer, the bass player, and the lead singer, and um, they were all great. They all loved it in the end, and they it was amazing. So that was a great opportunity um, that I did for oh. for them. It was awesome, Victor. I really love that you. I mean, those are great stories, but I really love that you just talked about how nervous you were with all these things because I think that's so <laughs> that's so real. If you yeah. would have clouded it over and be like, and this is what I did, it was amazing, great. But part of what we try to do on the show too is actually to say like, hey, actually, when you're like, I, uh, you know, afterwards you could be like, it was amazing and it was great, what great opportunity. But you could actually say, yeah, it was really freaky doing it, but you're super nervous. But you got to take the chance, right? That isn't that the yeah. point? Like if you want to do it, nervous is good. It'll keep you on your toes. Oh, absolutely. I think it keeps everybody you know, in line for sure. Cause yeah. it, it was a great experience, but I was definitely very nervous. And even, even I, when I was done and he liked it, I was still nervous when they were performing. I was like, Oh my God, like what is going to happen? Like, are they going to get all like, you know, this bad feedback and right. you know, it's, it's a big deal when you're, when you're doing something like that for someone that that's going to wear it on, you know, on TV for a big event. It's, it's pretty a big deal. So that was hard. I was. The, I mean, I don't think any anything like that is never easy. Um, even even for a regular commission, it's never easy. I'm always very like, well, I hope they like it because, you know, this is big. Like this is pretty huge. Sure. I always I always treat all my clients like you know it's it. This is going in your house, so I got to make sure that they're happy by the end of the day, and that's all I care about. So you know, I go on from there, but something my manager always tells me is like, you know, they actually looked and hired you to do this work. So they love your work. So regardless of what outcome it come or style or hours or whatever it is that you feel like they're going to love it because they love you already. Mm. And I was like, you know, that's crazy. I never look at that. I never think of that. And that's something that I always forget um, all the time because I'm always nervous to make sure, because I want everybody to have a nice piece in their house and and an original, because you know, they may, it's special. It's definitely very special, opposed to buying a print. You know, anybody could buy a print. Yeah. But to have an original painting, it makes it's very special to everyone, and it's um, it's a really rewarding thing when you're hanging it up for them, or they'll they'll send me a picture like, oh my god, I just got it in the mail. Thank you, and they're blown away, or you know when they have it and they hang it and they have a house party or they have a little wine and dinner and have friends over and they're like texting me like, Oh my God, you're like the talk of the night. I'm like, Oh my God, thank you. Like that means a lot. Well, that's awesome. I, and I love that your manager gave you the advice. who actually answered one of the questions I was going to ask you about some of the great advice that somebody has given you. And I think that sums it up perfectly. And I love that you are so invested in making sure that you're your, your client has the best experience and the best, you know, result. I mean, that's absolutely you care. I love that. That's so good. Right. Here, here's a I question. Mean, I, I have to. Yeah. I have to, or else, or else I wouldn't exist if I didn't care. <laughs> I have to. I have to. I have to care for them, and and it's very genuine because, um, you know, like I said, I want you to be happy, and well, it's personal to, too, isn't it? Isn't right, your work it's personal? Beyond. Thing? Yeah. Beyond. Beyond. Like sometimes they'll come up to me like, "We don't care what you paint." We just want something for our house. So then my job is to hang out with you and go have dinner, go out mm. of the movie and just spend time with you and really get to know you. And, you know, then I could go from that and be like, oh, he was very, you know, he was very joyful and he was, he was very quiet or whatever it was. Wow. And then I'll try, I'll try to incorporate that in the painting. And then when they get it, they're like, oh my God, that's like so me. And I do capture that for them. And, um, it's something that I don't even know how to explain how I learned it or how I was. You just pay attention. You know, it sounds it's like it's just it's just something that just happens, and 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 I'm like, whoa, that's awesome, and it makes me feel good to know that they are beyond 
their life and they just can't even imagine that I captured their feeling or their way of, of being in this painting, you know, with colors or with a smile on the character or something ridiculous and then they will love it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of how you said you were inspired by music. You know, you interpret whatever that is into some kind of emotion feeling and then into some specific visual tangible things almost like you're doing that with people too you take right how they talk their personality their movement that's a that's an amazing trait that's that's really special right and this that's something that most artists i tell nowadays because they ask me and i'm like you know what? I, I could only tell you my experience i can't teach you that has to be something genuine and i don't even know how it happened to me so I'm always like, just just believe in yourself and just just do it. Yeah, again, mm. you really have nothing to lose. I'm like, if if you fail, your job is to pick yourself up and then learn from that. That's right. And until you do that, then then you'll be okay. I was like, because nothing is 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 perfect in life, and and I always tell them, stop um, your expectations. That's a big key. Like, if your expectations are this with your client or with yourself you're not going to do good. You have to erase that out of your vocabulary, out of your life. Meaning, expectation. meaning they're too high? Well, yeah, because if you expect like, you know, um, this client to pay you this much and it doesn't happen, <laughs> then you're you're sad. Or let's say you're you're expecting your client to love it and he doesn't, you know, it's just, you always have to go very, it's crazy. That's something that I definitely, I'm always afraid of expectations. Like, I'm like, I, I don't have any. So, I'm like, I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> and so does that mean just like being like you said earlier, like try, you try to stay a little bit more humble, but does it also Always. mean like you, because you have to have some expectations, like um, at least the expectation of like, I'm going to do a great job. I'm going to do my best, but right. I don't expect that they're going to 100 percent love it. I hope they will or some, like, do you kind of fit somewhere in the middle there of like, yeah, I'm going to oh. do my best, but uh, I'm reaching I know that all I can do is this, the best I can and we'll see where it goes. Uh, not necessarily like that. I think it's in the middle where it's just, um, I always give it my whole hundred, but I just don't know if they're going to see that. You know what I mean? Like, sure. I sure. can't, I, I can't say, uh, you know, I did 50 today. Like, no, it's always 110, yeah. but they might think, Oh, he only did 50. Like, it's so crazy. So I just, I try to always be like that word. I'm always afraid of that word. Cause okay. I'm like, Oh my God, I hope they don't go this route. Sure. I get that. I get that. Well, as we wrap up here, let me ask this question. Um, cause you've given a lot of great advice, I think to anybody who's trying to be creative or art or in any kind of world like that. But what advice would you give to somebody who's just wanting to get into art or creative career? Like, like maybe kind of in your shoes before they want to start somewhere they kind of don't know where to go like what would you tell them to get started um wow that's pretty big uh i would just say you know whatever it is you're doing uh just know that it's always going to evolve to whatever it's going to be um and you probably should start somewhere opposed to nothing and then sit down and regret it or watch someone else do it while you had the idea. Um, so I always told everyone, continue doing what you're doing because it's going to evolve to something bigger than you expected. And, um, you know, just, I would say start, you know, doing whatever it is, but then at the same time have a, a good platform and, you know, have your social media and try to get exposed and try to, do little events like if you have a uh, a community where they have an art walk or you know or something like that just be a part of it and just make sure that people know who you are and try to expose yourself a little more because that's kind of what social media is now is like where you have to put yourself out a little more in order for them to see you and be like who is this and it continues to grow like, you know, people would start, you know, you'll start getting the whole, well, how much are you for your commissions or, you know, how does it work? And then, then you start seeing, okay, well, I'm actually doing something right. Cause people are actually contacting me and asking me or there, or my manager's coming and asking me this question. And so definitely 
put yourself out there more than usual. Yeah, that's smart. I think just like you talked about, you started with doing a lot more on Instagram and it really paid off. Yeah, so, absolutely. So for folks that want to find you online, see what you're working on, you know, the work that you've done and how to get in contact with you and stuff, where should we find you online? Um, so uh, if you want to know like everything before it's even on the website, I would say go to Instagram, which is level 52, L-E-V-E-L five and a two. Um, and if you want to buy any like limited edition t-shirts or merch in general, it's a uh, level 50. So you have to spell out 50. So level 50 and then the number two.com. And if you want to just look at art, it's just victor h.com and you would see everything there. Perfect. Well, and we'll add all of that to the show notes here and we'll put it on the website and we'll probably even have some of uh, your artwork on our website so we can point them over to you guys. Awesome. Well, this has been awesome, Victor. Um, I loved your, like I said, the, your advice. I think it's been really wise, really smart. And um, I really do love the whimsical kind of dark element that you put into your work. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm still staring at Lucifer and he kind of, he's super cool and freaks me out at the same time. It's true. It's true. It's true. Uh, well, thanks again so much for being on the show. This has really been great. No, awesome. Thank you for having me and giving me uh, this opportunity. So again, everything happens for a reason. So thank you again yeah. for even thinking of me and making me part of this. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for listening to the show this week. What'd you think? Great story? Any new ideas? If you're new to the show, subscribe to receive a new episode each week automatically. And if you love the show and you want to help us out, go tell a friend about it. Then go write us a quick review on iTunes. Both of these favors really help us get the word out. If you want to follow along with me and see behind the scenes fun and more, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at me Christopher. That's M-E-C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-E-R. To get even more inspiration and updates, Follow Accidental Information on Instagram and Facebook at Accidental Information and on Twitter at Accidental Info. We also post original articles about following your passions and getting creative and more information about each episode at AccidentalInformation.com. Thanks for joining me this week. Now let's keep chatting online and then I will talk to you again next week.